Hello, I'm Rick Starbucks. I'd like to welcome you to Young Martin's Reels. Today's project is going to be this Quantum QL3. Uh, this one belongs to Ken. This is actually his fishing, the one that he actually fishes with out on his boat. And uh, he brought his rod over that had broken the eye out, and this was still attached to it. And he said, uh, can I leave it with you and you go ahead and get it serviced? I said, well, sure, Ken. Grab it off. Let's see what we can do with it. Uh, I'm going to leave his line on. I usually take the line off, but we're going to leave that line on because... Uh, I don't know what he whether he wants to put new line on it or not. Okay, although it probably needs new line at this point. Let's go ahead and take the handle off. There we go. There's that side. There's this side over here. That's good. All right. Let's go ahead and take these screws out. All right, that's got that screw out. Let's see what we can do under here. See if we can get this come up and off. It does look like it separates right here, so it should come off. Not too much trouble. All right, there we go. Get that off. Got a lot of dirt around the clicker, but and in the bushing itself. It's looking pretty bad in there. All right, let's see what we can do here. Okay. That's a bushing, it's not a bearing. And uh it looks like it could come off okay, and it did. It's gonna go back in there. That's some nasty looking grease though. All right, let's see if we can remove the crosswind block screw. Okay, then we'll get hold of the double E clip. Let's see if we can pop that up and out. There we go. Now the axle shaft should come out. <laughs> let's use the knob to hold on to there we go now push the button take the axle shaft out of the knob okay yeah pretty nasty greasy but okay all right now we can take the main gear out and it came out bushing and all okay set the bushing over there's the main gear pretty dirty but not too bad the crosswind block and crosswind gear come up with it all right Let's get back here uh, and see if we can unscrew. There we go. This screw on the back. I'm lucky it didn't break since it's a plastic screw. Okay, now we can unscrew this. It comes off and that brings us to this clip. going to do is get in right here in behind it and lift that out like so there we go let's get that clip out now we're going to take this out it's got a couple of shim washers right there for the spring now there should be a spring up inside there let's see if we can get this to come on out now let's push it from the inside there we go okay and this builds up pretty much okay only one eared washer on this one okay no spring interesting Normally, these drags have a big spring in them. This one didn't have one. So that's kind of interesting. Okay. 
Okay, just a stack of washers. Riding against it. All right. There's no keyed washer. It's not that I've seen so far. Okay. There's the keyed washer. You can't see very well that it's keyed, but it is. Okay. And that rides in between these two. Okay. Okay, let's take a quick look at these, how they stack. Okay, there should be, let's see if there's one left inside there. Is there? No. All right. Okay, we've got this washer here. It goes here. And normally, yeah, there it is. You just look, see this little thing went on front? That's what I was looking for. Okay, it goes, this washer, then this piece is going to sit in there like this, then goes this washer, followed up by this eared washer, followed by a keyed washer, or sorry, an eared washer, I'm missing one, I think, this one, followed up by the keyed washer, there should be, oh, there it is, another drag washer. There's the next drag washer. Then goes the eared washer, followed up by this stack of uh, spring washers here. And then this piece goes in last. Okay, that's how that stacks up. Okay, this is going to need a good scrubbing inside, Ken. And let's go ahead now. Take this apart up here. I'll remove this locking screw from here. And I'm going to set it over here so it doesn't get lost. And we will remove this nut. So, and then the rotor will come off, and all of our anti-reverse is taking place down inside here. We're going to remove these two screws now. Okay, and this will come out. There's our anti-reverse right there. There's our bearing. Our bearing's in good shape. And what do we got here? Just a blob of grease. Okay, and it looks like maybe a spacer. Okay, this comes off. This one should come off, but there's no reason to take it off. It's fine. Okay, that's got all of that. We're going to put that those in the tank to clean. And let's take a look-see at what we have here. This is not tripping quite the way it should. So... Let's start off by taking, trying to see if we can break this screw loose first off. There we go. That broke it loose. The screw we're gonna watch see if there's a washer stuck in here oftentimes there is and there is okay let's see if I can get that washer to come out 
There we go. Got the washer out. I'm going to set that here. Well, before we do that, let's see if this roller is even rolling, and it is. So that's good. The roller will turn. I'm going to put the washer on it. And then set the screw back in place. And screw it in a little bit. And we'll get back to that in a little while. Let's go ahead now. This has a e-clip on this side over here holding it on. I don't really know that we're going to need to take that off. Uh, yeah, might as well. Got to get the e-clip pulled around enough to get hold of. There we go. E-clip comes off. We'll set it over here. And then we'll pull this out. Yeah, there's just a lot of dirt and grime in there. We'll take that and clean it up. Okay, let's go ahead and take this screw out. I don't know that it's covering anything. Yeah, it's covering this plate. There's a plate under there for the trip lever. Okay. And there's the trip lever with its spring. So look how gre greasy and grimy that is. Okay. I don't want to try to let that free without it popping out. So let's see what I can do here. There we go. Okay, it's got the spring out. Set that over there and we're gonna hopefully lift this trip release out of there like that and we're gonna have to scrub that down it's going in the tank okay let's get over to this side now and let's remove this screw on this side and that doesn't want to come out so we'll leave it there for now and let's get this other e-clip out I think it's really got a grip in there. There we go. There's the other clip out. Now this should come out like so. There it is. And now this will come off. And we can take this out like that. And we've got it all apart. Ready to, what do we got here? What is this? I have no idea what that is. Unless it's a weight, a balance weight. I think it's a balance weight. It's its purpose in life there is to balance. Okay. Um, here's another balance weight up here. All right, we are going to call this quits for the night. All I'm going to do is take these parts that need to be cleaned, put them into my parts basket. All right, I'd like to welcome you back. For most of you, it has just been a few seconds. For me, it's been uh, almost 24 hours. And now I get to play that game called, hey, hey, I took it apart a day ago. Let's see if I can figure out how to put it back together. So let's work on that game. All right, we're going to start off by putting the drag together. So we're going to start off with this piece here. This is a rounded side on this side and a keyed side on this side. See the two flats? That's the keyway. Okay, so we're going to start off on this side. We're going to put a little grease on this side for the um, drag washer to stick on. There we go. Slide it down. 
and we're gonna flip it over to the other side. This is the keyed side now, and we're gonna put another drag washer on this side. And we don't wanna put a lot of grease on there, just enough to help hold the part in place. Slide that down like that. Okay, then next goes this, ear, what we call an eared washer. See, it's got the little tabs on each side. Those are like little ears. That's the eared washer. We're gonna slip that on. Next goes this drag washer. And next we'll go the keyed washer. Now it's keyed to this block. So it only fits on one way or the other. You can flip it around, but that's pretty much it. Either way is correct. And if we can get it to go on. There we go. Slide that down. Then goes the next fabric washer. Then goes the final eared washer like this. Okay, and this is where this one gets a little different from most of the rest of them I've ever messed with. From here, it's all of these spring washers. And you can just stack all four of them up together and stick them on. Okay, if you want, you could reverse some of them so they don't fit inside of each other. So they're opposites to give it more springing action. But this should be sufficient. Okay, we're going to take this now and we're going to insert it down in here with those ears matching up to these ears here. And you kind of got to turn it sideways to do it or otherwise it's all going to just fall in and then you don't have anything. Okay, I'll get it all lined up. Get those ears to drop into their slots and then you got to kind of straighten it out because it's going to want to tilt a little bit. There we go, straighten it out. There we go, tap it down in so that it's even all the way around. Make sure it's all the way up with the teeth in the front like this. And now we can take this piece and if you look, I stuck this in here and uh, I forgot to take it back out. There we go. This plastic piece here, see those four tabs in there? Now there's four tabs on here also that match up to those. So you can go ahead and put that on and just line those up so that it locks in there. That way you know you've got it in before you put it on. Okay, stand it up, screw it on. Okay, once you got it there, let's go ahead, that screws it down and tightens up the drag. Now let's go ahead and take it back off, leaving the center piece in place right there because we have to put this spring in, and the spring is what holds it in place. Okay, so we're gonna take one end of the spring and lock it in right here. See how it locks in to the hole? The other side, we're gonna put in this slot right here and we're just gonna walk it around until it drops in and that'll pop in. That locks it into the hole there. And if you look, that spring is on these little, that's actually the clicker for this when it rotates, okay? There we go, Get the click. All right, now we're gonna put the screw back in. Be careful with it, because it is a plastic screw. We don't want to break it, so don't crank it down. Just kind of put it on and just snug it up. Okay, and then we're going to loosen that all the way up like that. That's got the drag installed. And people get a little leery about taking all that apart, but it's really not that bad once you get the hang of them. Okay. All right. Now we're going to work on putting the pinion back in. So here's our pinion, and if you look, we've got our um, anti-reverse cog right here. It slides on, okay? And on top of that, it's gonna go this shim washer, and it, to hold it in place, we're just gonna put a little bit of grease, and it just barely fits there, but it does go there. We're gonna put just a little bit of grease on that to hold that shim washer in place. There we go. And make sure that it actually fits down into the little groove that's cut there for it so that it will stay. At that point, we can go ahead and slide on the bearing. Like that. And see that shim washer is what keeps that um, clicker cog from interfering with the bearing. Okay, let's go ahead now and put on some oil. I've already oiled this before I left last night. I oiled it good. Now we're going to oil it again, and we're ready to install it back in the case. Now, come down here. If you look, your anti-reverse uh, dogs are sticking down inside. Just flip the lever back here, 
right here. So if that lever back and that'll move them back out of your way. And we can set this in, get it to drop in like that. And we're ready to put these two screws back in. Now we're ready to grease a pinion gear. Now you could have greased it before putting it in, but then you tend to get it all over you. And I just say not do that. I just say wait till I get it in the case and grease it in place. And now if everything here is correct up to this point, let's go ahead and oil our anti-reverse dog. And then we'll flip the lever here. And if everything is correct, it should rotate one way, but not back the other way. There we go. Let's set this to the side for a minute now and let's reassemble this um, rotor assembly. We're gonna start off, now this is the odd part of this one. If you look, it has this piece right here and I've never seen one of these before. And what I believe this is, is just a balance weight. It just has a really peculiar design. I've never seen one designed like that, but it's just, it's almost like they had a bunch of these things sitting around and said, hey, we'll use those as balance weights and then they've configured this to fit it. It's just really odd. I've never seen one like that. All right, we've got that in. Now let's go ahead back to here and let's put our spring in. Just that round ball there goes into that round hole. Set that down in like that. There we go. And that's going to leave this sticking up a little bit. That's fine. Let's go ahead and add some grease. So this can slide easily. And we are ready at that point to put this back on. That post there goes into that round hole. So let's go ahead and put that in place. Like so. Let's put a little grease in that hole. Don't want to wear out the hole due to lack of lubrication. Okay, when you've done that, you should be able to just kind of slide this down and get it in place like that over top of the hole. And we're ready at that point to put the screw back in. And at this point, we're ready to put the cover back on. There's the cover. Slide it up in. I might have to take that back off, dang it. Yeah, the cover is supposed to go on first and then this because that fits down over top. So, unfortunately, I got to take that E-clip off again. I don't like those E-clips at all. All right, put the cover on like so. Let's put the screw in. Now we'll put this back on. Put that post back in the hole. Line this up, slide it down until it goes over. There we go, we're gonna put our pin back in. Hold the pin in place. Set the E-clip on. And snap it into place, there we go. That's traveling much more freely than, freely than it did before. All right, we're going to go to this other side now and uh, sprayed this down with WD-40 last night to let it sit and uh, remove any corrosion that had gotten on it, and it has done a fairly decent job of that. All right, come back, add some grease. This one has got the post built into it. Okay, uh, tell you what, just so we don't end up with the same problem we had before, let's go ahead and put this side cover on. Oh, wait. We got more to put on here. We gotta put this guy back in. Okay. And this one here, this is our trip lever assembly. And we're gonna make sure it's well greased because trip levers are hard to, sometimes, especially a big heavy one like this, they don't like to move once they're in. And it takes a fair amount of force to get them moving. So we're gonna try to improve that as best we can. Let's take, slide this into the rotor like so okay and now it should move freely up and down and it does there we go we've got to put this spring in and i'm looking to see if it's got any kind of shoulders in there it looks like it's got a little shoulder at the bottom that it fits into 
So I'm going to set that into that shoulder. And I'm going to, ooh, I almost lost it there. Hold down on it with two fingers so that if one gets loose, the other one can still catch it. Okay, and make sure that the bottom gets over here where it belongs. Like so. There you go. That's got it in place. Now, if it, when it drops down, it's going to want to automatically pop back up. Okay, it's got a spring assist in there. We're going to add a little grease to that just to keep that spring lubricated. Now we'll put the side cover back on. Like so. Put the screw in it. All right, we're going to put a little bit of grease on here. And we're going to set this over to the side for a moment, and let's get back to this guy. Okay, I've got this one here. I'm going to take this apart. I have not cleaned this yet. Because I wanted it to be here. I wanted you guys to be here when we did. I'm going to try to keep it all in the frame. i got to remember. Okay, let's take some of that off. And let's try cleaning that one more time. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's wipe this guy here down. Let's see if we can clean the inside of it. Now while that's on there, let's see if I can clean the outside of it a little bit. Yeah, that went from being a black plastic bushing to being a white plastic bushing. I'd say it was a little bit dirty. All right. We're going to put that on ever so slightly. Put some oil under it. Slide it into place. Now we're going to wipe off this one. sure it's good and clean and there's still some dirt along the edge here you got to get that off okay that's good there and that's good on that side okay it's symmetrical so it doesn't really matter which way it goes and let's go ahead Add a drop of oil on there. Slide that back in. All right, that brings us down to these. We've got this nasty looking washer here. We'll wipe him off. And this one here, the screw. We'll wipe it off along with its washer. Okay. Now, one of these is going to go on the outside and one's going to go on the inside, I believe. That's the way that was. Okay, a little washer on the screw. And a little washer on this side here. And it's probably going to take a, something to hold that in place. But we'll see. Alright. Line this up. And I believe at one time there was a locking washer on this screw. Due to the indentations that are on the inside. But it's not there. So... Tighten that all the way down yet. There's a lot of free flowing on this other end. Okay, we're going to slip this end in. And look, see how we're kind of sprung? Nope, oh, hang on, it's back out. Okay. I'm going to put this in, but see how this is way out here where it doesn't belong? Okay, it should be way in here. It takes a tremendous amount of force to force it in there. Okay? Well, I say that, but I mean, not by some standards is a tremendous amount of force, but it does take a fair amount. Okay? That's pretty close right there. Let's try bending it in just a little bit more. Okay, let's see what we have now. That's pretty close. 
Okay, that's still got a little bit of indent I gotta push in. So let's try it one more time. Here we go. Okay, that's much better. Okay, we're gonna put this last E-clip on over here. Let's snap that into place. There we go. I'm gonna put a drop of oil here. Another drop of oil on this roller. A little bit on the screw head just to help keep it stay lubricated. And then we're gonna go ahead and tighten this screw down. Okay, does the roller still roll? Yes, it does. Okay. And I'm actually able to push the trip release from this side. Okay, so next to go in is going to be this side bushing over here, which I never did get around to cleaning. All right, and if you look, I don't know if you can see, let's try to blow it up a little bit. If you look, there's a little notch right there and another one down there. And this bushing has got little posts that stick out on it. So you've got to get that to fit down into there and get those posts to line up and drop in like that. If they don't go in, you're not going to get it right. Put some grease in here. And if it was a bronze bushing, I probably would not use grease. I would probably use oil to make it a little bit faster. But because it's a plastic bushing, it's a little less strong. So I went ahead and went with the grease. Okay, let's go ahead and grease up this post over here. And then let's go ahead and grease the teeth on the cross wound block. Grease the face of the cross round block and a little bit for the back side too. Then we're going to set that cross round block down inside the body over top of that post with the post to the rear, this one here. Okay. Next part to get greased up is going to be the cross wound block to go on the cross wound gear. That's going to sit down over top of that post. Just like that. Now we're off to our gear. We're going to take our gear, and I've got these shim washers on the back side of it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take those off for a second. Or is it them or the, it? Just it. Okay, and I'm going to put a little bit of grease behind it right there just to hold that in place so that it doesn't slide off. Then we're going to flip this over. And we're going to put grease in the teeth of the gear. Okay, then we're gonna come back and put some on the cross wind gear portion of the gear. And then a little bit on the post there where it's gonna slide into the bushing. All right, now here's where things get a little bit tricky. Now, if you look, see that cutout right there? And see this spring right here? What we're going to do is we're going to line this spring up to this hole in the gear where we can see it. Okay. See if you can see it. Can you see that little spring? Okay. With this, that spring being visible down in that hole, now we're going to take this gear and we're going to line it up and take that spring and line it up in that little hole in the cross wind arm right there. So that has got to go into there when you put this in. And it's doing its thing. Perfect. Okay. Now we're ready to set 
the rotor back in place. Let's zoom back out again. Okay, let's set this back in here. And it's got to line up with the flaps on that gear when you set it in place, like that. Okay. Go ahead, put the nut on and tighten it down. take our axle shaft that we've cleaned nicely and we're going to oil it and we're going to slide it down into the pinion slide it down and we're going to get it to line up in the cross wind block okay Straighten it up so it can go in. Okay, then once it's in, then we're going to slide it back until it goes into the um, drag mechanism in the back. Okay, once we get it there, then we slide it back until see those two not two those see those two notches right there, one there, and one there. As it slides in and out, well, that's where this E clip or C clip assembly is going to go. We're going to set that in place so that these two little C's fit into those notches on that axle shaft and then we're going to slide it down in there so it locks it in place. And I don't, I got it too far down. There we go. Like so. It's in and it's. I don't think that's the right screw. I think this is the right screw for that. It's a machine screw rather than a plastic screw. All right. I'm going to put that in and screw it down. All right. Let's see if we have things good up to this point. Okay, does the triple mechanism trip? It does. All right, we're ready to put the side case on once I clean it up a little bit. Okay, the next part to put in is going to be the side case, and we've got to put this bushing in there just like we did in the other side. And we're going to add a little grease to that. Set this down in place and see if we can get the snap on where it needs to go, like so. There we go. All right, and some of you guys always recommend adding a little bit of oil into each of these holes, and it serves two purposes in a uh, composite reel like this, it helps the screw go in easier, and in uh, some of the um, old metal ones it keeps them from corroding so let's uh go ahead and put a little in there okay screws are in let's go ahead slip the handle on let's put a little yeah, let me clean that out just a little bit up in there Add some oil in the knob area and I'll add some in this pivot joint here and let's go ahead and slide this in and install the screw all right now some of you think I might have forgotten but I haven't there's a screw right here it's going to go on this nut at the top it helps hold the 
nut locked in place on the rotor. Okay, last but not least to put on is this rotor, and it's a push button rotor. And what you got to remember is that these things are uh, mechanical, and so they have a tendency to get a little gummed up inside. So it does not hurt to run some WD-40 in there every so often and rub your, run yourself a cotton swab into it to get that dirt out. Because that dirt will cause that button to start binding. Once you've done that, go ahead, add a couple drops of oil in there and that should be ready to go for a long time again to go. Okay, there we go. And let's back it out some more. And the Quantum Q QL3 is up and running fine again. It wasn't down to begin with. Okay, now we got no drag. Let's see if we can bring the drag in. Oh yeah, nice drag. Okay, anti-reverse is working. Anti-reverse override. There we go. And we just made a mess of that line just then. It's okay. Let's get it out of there. <laughs> it's got a little thing it's supposed to be on over here and it came off of it. Oh, the line keeper. Oh, I made a mess, didn't I? Yeah, let's do it the easy way. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put it back into the line keeper here. And I will clip off the excess so it didn't get yanked out of the line keeper. There we go. Okay. There we go. Anti-reverse works. Anti-reverse override works. I'll wipe this down. I'm going to reattach it to Ken's rod that I fixed for him. And uh, he's ready to go redfish fishing again with this guy. Uh, he's quite proud of the fact that it's one of his lowest dollar reels that caught him his biggest fish. So, uh, there you go. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. Tell me what you didn't like about it. Interesting thing, I am getting a fair number of dislikes, but nobody's ever telling me what it was they didn't like. They're just disliking. Okay, so be it. Uh, it just keeps my numbers down. and keeps other people from being able to find the videos. Um, so, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. If you liked it. If you didn't, I don't mind you hitting the dislike button. Just tell me what it is you didn't like. Maybe I can do something about it. And uh, for now, that's Rick Stivers with Young Martin's Reels, signing out.